Hey guys, Tom Chomik here, the creator and lead engineer behind the Panelskin platform. And I'm here today to talk about our newest addition to the Panelskin family, the Panelskin Custom Builder. Now the Panelskin Custom Builder uh, allows you to create custom tours uh, from any of, the, any of the Google tours that you've published. Uh, that being said, uh, if this is your first time using Panelskin, uh, I'd recommend taking a look at the, our first video for how to use the publisher. Uh, we'll include a link to that in the description. Uh, also, this, this video is going to be quite long, so uh, I do encourage you to watch the full video, but we are going to have within the description uh, timestamps that point to different sections uh, throughout the video, so you have quick reference to the different items that were discussed. Cool, so uh, uh, let's begin. So it's important to note that there's three different ways to create a custom tour. The first way is directly from the dashboard. Uh, so if I click Create Tour, that takes me to, into the Tour Wizard. Uh, it's the same tour wizard that you would use to publish to Google Maps, uh, but you may have noticed that there's an additional option here now, uh, a button called Create a Custom Tour. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Uh, and then Panelskin asks me what type of custom tour I'd like to create. Now you do have two options for the types of custom tours you can create. You can either create a custom tour from a Google tour that you've published, or a custom tour that is not on Google. Now the option for creating a custom tour that's not on Google yet is not available but it's something we'll be adding pretty soon. For the time being, you can create custom tours from Google Tours that you've published. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then the next step is to select the client that you want to create the custom tour for. In my instance, I'm going to create a custom tour for Hilton. So I'm going to select Hilton, then click Next. Now the third step is to select the Google Tour that you'd like to create a custom tour from. In my case, I'm going to select Hilton Chicago, and as a last step, uh, you have the option of, of adding a theme. So I'm going to start by adding a logo. And using our cropping tool, you can select the exact region of the logo that you'd like to use. And once you've done that, you can select a primary and secondary color to use within your theme. So in my case, I'm going to want to use a navy blue for the primary color and change out the primary color of my icon icons to, to white and then I'll click create my tour. Now what Panoskin does is it uses some AI technology uh, to attempt to build auto build a tour uh, from your from your previous Google tour. So we'll just let that run and as you can tell Panels can auto-built a custom tour for me. Uh, now, it's not perfect, so we do have an edit tab to edit some of these features. But as you could tell, it did a pretty good job and only took seconds to create. Now, another cool thing is that Panels can also auto-create a VR experience. So if I click this VR button here, you can see that Panels can auto-create a VR experience for you as well with full navigation. Now before we continue, I'd like to show you two other ways of how you can create a virtual tour. So the first way is by going to your clients and clicking the plus icon under the custom tours for the client that you'd like to create a custom tour for. And what this does is it takes you to the builder, but as, I, as you can see, uh, it skips the first few steps because it already knows that you want to create a custom tour. In this particular instance, I just select the tour that I'd like to create the custom tour for, and I can click Create My Tour. A second way is to actually go under your, your tour list for the client and click Custom Tour. What this does is it also takes you to the third step, but it also pre-selects the tour that you want to create the custom tour for. Uh, and then going through the same steps like we did before. I can either create a new theme where I upload a logo and choose the colors, or I can search an existing theme for the th client and select that instead. And then I just click Create My Tour. And Panelskin will, 
will auto build the tour for me using the theme that I previously selected. Now as you can tell, the Hilton theme that I created before was applied to this tour. Now the purpose of themes is so you don't have to recreate the theme a lot of times if you have a client that has a lot of tours. So for example for Hilton, if we were to do let's say 50 tours for them, I don't have to upload the logo 50 times or choose colors 50 times. I just create the theme once uh, and then when I create my custom tours, I select that theme. What's also cool about having themes is that if let's say the client decided to change their logo or they decided to change the colors, you don't have to go into each individual tour that you created and update those things. Instead, you go into the theme that the tours are using and update it once there and once you click apply, it applies to all your tours. So let's go through some of the more of the more of the edit features within the custom builder. So I'm going to go ahead and click edit. And this takes me to the edit section where I can work on my tour. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is the save button here. So by clicking save, any changes that I've made to the tour will be saved and persisted. The second item I'd like to talk about is the start screen. So this lets you control the start position of the tour. So let's say, for example, I don't want the start position to be this entrance over here that you see. Let's say I want it to be the lounge area instead. What I do is I navigate within the tour where I want my start position to be. I click Start. And then I click Capture New, Capture New Start Position. And what that does is it sets a new start position for me. Another thing I can do is under the Start Screen tab, I can change whether I want to show my logo on the start screen, whether I want to show a full screen button on the start screen, and I can also change the text that shows up on the start screen as well. And then while, in order to persist the changes, I just click Save. And then if I go back to the Tour tab, you can see that my start position has changed. And now I'll click the Edit tab to go back and edit my tour. The next tool I'd like to show you is the Hotspot tool. By clicking the hotspot icon here, you can see that it drops a hotspot tooltip onto my screen. And what I could do is I can navigate my scene to place the hot to, to place the position of the hotspot. And when I'm happy with the position of the hotspot, I can click set. And what that does is it drops a hotspot onto my scene. Now if I click on the hotspot, you can see I get some settings here. The first setting is the hotspot type. There's six different types of hotspots. There's info hotspots, video hotspots, URL hotspots, audio hotspots, and the elevator up and elevator down hotspots. The info hotspot is the simplest type of hotspot. So what I'll do for my info hotspot is I'll first start by adding a title. and I can add a description and I can also upload an image and what that does is it opens up a crop tool and I can use that to crop a specific area that I like to include and once I'm happy I click add and you can see I added I added all the information that I need for my info hotspot and once I'm happy with it I just click save. If I were to go back to the tour you can see that my info hotspot is next to the stairwell and if I click on it there's my title, my image, and the description that I added. So what I'll do is I'll add a few more hotspots In this particular instance, I'm going to add a video hotspot. And I'll paste in a YouTube video address. 
I can add a, a title if I like. And I can also paste in some text. I'll then click Save. And add a few more hotspots. So in this instance, I'll add a URL hotspot, which is just a hotspot that points to a web address. I'll add one more hotspot here. That is going to be an audio hotspot. Uh, and what you can do is you can upload a MP3 audio clip or an OGG audio clip. Uh, we actually recommend uploading both if you, if you have uh, both file types. So that way you can get the most browser support, but if not, an MP3 is fine. And once that's done uploading, let's click Save. And if I were to open up my tour now, you can see I have all those other hotspots that I just added. So I've got the video hotspot. I've got a uh, web address hotspot that if I click, it'll open up the web address that I put in. And I also have an audio hotspot. Welcome to the Health in Chicago. So the one other type of hotspot I'd like to show you is the elevator hotspot. The elevator hotspot is just a hotspot that takes you up or down a floor. So to show you that, I'll navigate to the third floor, and I'll copy the panel ID. Uh, for that scene by clicking copy panel ID and I'll go back to the Normandy lounge and in the Normandy lounge you're going to just drop a hotspot down click set change the hotspot type to elevator up and then paste in the panel ID that is copied and click save and what I'll actually do as well is I'll copy the panel ID of the Normandy Lounge. And when I get to the third floor, I'll add another hotspot that's set to elevator down. And I'll paste in the panel ID of the Normandy Lounge. And then I'll click Save. And if I go back to my tour, you'll see that I have the elevator up hotspot from the Normandy Lounge, and if I click it, it'll take me to the third floor. And you also see that I have an elevator down hotspot, which if I click that, it'll take me back to the Normandy Lounge. Now there's one last thing I'd like to mention about hotspots. If you open them up, at any time you can change the type or any of the information out. You can also change the heading and the pitch by either entering it manually or using these arrows here. And once you click Save, those changes will persist. And if I were to open up that tour, you can see the hotspots now being moved. So the next thing I like to touch on is arrow types. As you can tell, the tour has the standard Google type arrows. But if I were to go to the arrow section, I have the option between arrows that you'd find in typical custom tours, halo arrows, on octagon arrows. And if I'm happy with either of these, I can click Save. And if I were to go to the tour, you can see now that all of my arrows have been swapped out to the octagon arrow. Equally, if I go to the arrow section, and as you can see, this scene has three types of arrows. And if I were to hover over the X, you can see a scene preview of where each of the arrows is pointing. You can also see the heading information for the location of each of the arrows. And this might be more apparent if I switch back to the Google Arrows. Uh, and as you can tell, the arrow that's currently facing forward from the scene preview 
is this bottom arrow over here. And if I started moving this toggle here, you can see I can control the heading per position of those arrows as well. And that doesn't matter if these are octagons, if it's a pulsing arrow or a halo. I can control the position using, using these arrows or dropping in the heading formation directly. So I'll just click Save. Now the next thing I'd like to show you is how to edit floor plans. Before I do that, I'll actually convert my arrows back to the regular Google arrows just to make things a little bit easier. Uh, and to add a floor plan, you just click Floor Plan. Uh, and then you have to upload a floor plan image. So I'll select a floor plan from, from uh, one of my folders. Uh, and that opens up the crop tool. Uh, and I can just use that to basically uh, resize and crop, uh, crop the image to what I'd like to use. Uh, once I'm happy with that, I just click Add. Uh, and that'll actually add a floor plan image uh, to my tour. Now the next step is to add a hotspot. Uh, so actually just look around in the scene here. Uh, I can see an entrance over here, uh, the 8th Street entrance, uh, which is actually right over here in this floor plan. So what I'll do is I'll just, uh, I'll just drop my little, I'll just you know, click on the image to drop a little radar in. Uh, and you can see that it added a radar. Uh, but now it's facing the wrong direction. So what I do is there's a little slider here called Radar Offset. Is I'll just start moving that, and what it'll do is it'll start adjusting my radar. Uh, and once I'm happy with it, where it's positioned, I let go. Uh, and, as you, and then as you can tell, once I start panning the scene around, uh, that radar is facing, is facing in the correct direction. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just click Save for now. Uh, and then I'll go back to my tour. And if I were to go into that, that scene where I had the floor plan, you can see that there's the floor plan with the radar uh, on the floor plan map. Now one thing you may notice is, is if I navigate to another scene, that floor plan disappears. But if I navigate back to that scene, that floor plan reappears. Uh, so what I'd like to show you next is how to actually add that floor plan uh, to other scenes. So I'm going to go back to the edit section and navigate to that scene where we have the floor plan. Uh, and what we do is we click the floor plan button again uh, to open up the floor plan settings for that floor plan. Uh, and there's a button here called Add Floor Plan to Other Scenes. So what we'll do is we'll just click that. Uh, and Panoscan lets me know that it's now going to be following my walkthrough. So wherever I walk while Panoscan's following the walkthrough, uh, it's, panel skin is going to basically add that floor plan to that scene. So I just I just navigate to the scenes where I want where I want panel skin to add that floor plan to. Uh, and when I'm done and I'm happy, I click stop following. And if I were to click save now uh, and go back to the tour, and then navigate back to that scene, you can see that that the floor plan shows up for the main scene, but as I start navigating, it's also showing up for those other scenes uh, that I told Panoskin to follow the walkthrough for. Now if I go and navigate to a scene that I didn't, didn't follow the walkthrough for, you'll see that that floor plan disappears. But you may have noticed that there aren't any radars in these scenes. Uh, if I'd like to add some radars, I can do that too. Uh, and, and to do that, I would just click the Edit section again. And then navigate to the scene that I want to add a radar to. And basically click the Floor Plan button again. Uh, and then just click on the image where you want the radar. And as you can see, Panoskin drops the radar down onto that scene too. Now, if the radar is incorrect, you can also use the radar adjustment to adjust the radar position so that it's facing the correct direction. Uh, and then we just click Save. Now what if I wanted to remove the floor plan from one of the scenes? What if I accidentally added it to a scene that I don't want it to be in? Well, what I can do is just navigate to that scene uh, such as, let's say, for example, the, the International Ballroom. 
Let's say I added the floor plan here and I don't want it showing up. Navigate to the scene, click floor plan, uh, and then I hover over remove floor plan and select remove floor plan from current scene. Click that button, and as you can tell, Panos is going to remove the floor plan from this scene. Now, I can also remove the floor plan from all scenes, uh, and if I selected that, it would actually remove this particular floor plan from all the scenes that it's been added to. But in my case, I don't want to do that. I'd like to, like to leave it for, for those scenes. So I'll just click Save. Now the next thing I'd like to talk about is the theme editor. So as you saw when you first created the Panos Contour, uh, it asked you for a primary and a secondary color, uh, and it asked you for a logo. Uh, equally, uh, if, you already had a, if you already had a theme, you could have just selected it from the drop-down. But what if you want to make some edits to that particular theme? Well, uh, you would just click this little theme icon here. Uh, and what that does is it opens up the settings, the theme settings for your tour. Uh, and within this area, you can actually select the type of theme that you want to use for this tour. So let's say you had multiple themes, you could select between those. Uh, or you can actually edit uh, the current theme that's powering this tour. So if I click Edit Select a Theme, it takes me into the theme editor for this, for this particular tour. Now one thing to note is if this theme uh, is, is being used by other tours, any changes that you make within this theme editor are going to apply not only to the current tour you're working on, but to all tours that are using this theme. Uh, so to quickly kind of go over the different settings you have available, uh, there's the theme title, which in this case is Hilton Chicago. Uh, there's the logo, which we uploaded before, which I could always uh, X out and upload a new one. Uh, then there's a tab called Menu Items. Uh, and what this is, is it's the different menu items that you see within, within the Panoskin menu. So if I were to go back to the Tour, Tour tab, uh, the menu items are basically uh, these menu items you see here to the right. So if I were to go back to the theme editor, you can see that there's the info menu item, there's the call to action, campus maps, lists, stacking, and a bunch of other standard types of buttons. Uh, and what you can control here is the actual naming for those, for, for those buttons. So let's say I don't want the info tab saying info. Let's say maybe I want it to say help. Uh, and I can also change out the icon. Uh, let's say I don't want the icon to be uh, the little eye icon. Maybe I want it to be this home here with a question mark. Uh, and if I were to click update and go back to the tour uh, and just refresh my screen here, you'll see now that it no longer says info. It says help with the little home icon. Uh, a third tab here is, uh, is the Domain Whitelist tab. So what this is, is it basically allows you to add some domain names that are whitelisted for your tour. And what that basically is, is it helps protect your tour. Uh, it helps protect from someone else taking your tour and embedding it in their own website. Uh, if you don't have any domains here, then what that basically means is, is, is that anyone in the world that, that sees your tour can take it and embed it on their website. Uh, but if you whitelist some domain names, then only those domain names will be able to, to embed this tour. So for example, let's say that I only want uh, HiltonChicagoMeetings.com uh, to be able to embed this tour. I would just add that in there. Uh, it's also good to add the www version. So I'll add www.HiltonChicagoMeetings.com. And then I'll just click Update. And what this does is basically protects my tour. So anyone that would try to embed this tour, they wouldn't be able to uh, unless it was for the HiltonChicagoMeetings.com or www.HiltonChicagoMeetings.com domain name. Uh, the last tab we have here is the Styles tab. So the Styles tab allows you to have granular control over all the colors uh, that are used within the theme that powers the tour. Uh, if you remember, when we first created the tour, uh, we were asked for a primary and secondary color. Uh, that was basically used to, 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 to automatically pre-fill some of these options here. Uh, but you have full control over all the different menu items, uh, carousel items, modal windows, start screens. So let's say that you want your carousel background. You don't want it to be a navy blue. Uh, maybe you want it to be a 
a lime green. I will just change that out here and then click update. And now if I go back to my tour and refresh, you can see that my carousel now has a lime green background while my menu background is still navy blue. So there's many more, more items here that you can change out colors for. Uh, and we give you full control over that. So the last few items I'd like to touch on in the top menu is the history tab, the settings tab, and what some of these numbers here mean. So the history tab just basically shows you the update history for your tour. Uh, it'll give you the name uh, of the person that made the update uh, and the date and timestamp the update was made. The settings tab allows you to change the title of your tour uh, or some other toggle settings such as turning auto rotate on when the tour loads. Uh, as you can tell, it's by default off, but if I set this to on and click save, and then open up the tour tab, you'll see that when my tour starts, uh, auto rotate is actually turned on. Uh, and I can control that uh, over the control with the control over here where I can shut it off as well. Cool. So I guess the last thing in the top menu I'd like to discuss uh, are these numbers here. Uh, this is just these are just here to kind of keep tally. Uh, of, of what you've what you've built so far within the tour and to kind of let you know what you've added to it. Uh, so as you can tell, I've got 40 thumbnail scenes here in the carousel, uh, six hot spots that I've added so far, uh, and one floor plan. Uh, and there's zero images and zero videos that I've added uh, within the images and videos tabs. Uh, but that'll soon increase because we'll show we'll, we'll be adding those later on. So the next thing I'd like to discuss is this right hand menu here. Uh, this is reflective of the right-hand menu that shows up within the tour when it loads. Uh, so the first item here you see is, is the info info item. If I were to click on that, uh, that's just a, a menu item that gives a little bit of information uh, about the tour itself. Uh, and as you can tell, a lot of this information is actually pre-populated for me. Uh, what Panoscan actually does when the tour is first created uh, is it went out into the web and tried to find the address and the name of the business listing. Uh, and if it could find it, it actually added that for me here. Now, I have the option of adding an image uh, to the info section as well, but if I don't add it, then Panels going to actually use the logo uh, that was set for the theme by default. Uh, there's also a description section uh, where I can type up a description, uh, but Panels can just place some placeholder text here, some lorem ipsum text, uh, just to show you where, where it would show up. Uh, and actually, if I open up the tour section uh, and click on the info button, which we actually renamed to, renamed to help in our theme, uh, you can see that the Hilton logo shows up because I didn't upload an image for the info section. Uh, and here's the address that we had uh, showing up there and the lorem ipsum text. Now, what if I don't want this showing in my menu here? Well, I can go back to the edit section. Uh, I can click on the info, uh, info button uh, and I can deselect show in menu. And if I click save and I go back to the tour, you'll see that the info button is no longer there. Now going back to the right hand menu, you can also see since I deselected info, it's actually a lighter gray uh, than the other menu items. You can see the other menu items are actually have a white, uh, white color, whereas the info item has a light gray color because it's been hidden from the menu system. Now CTA stands for call to action. So if I were to click on this, uh, you can see the menu settings here uh, allow me to, to, to put in a URL. Now what Panoscan does is for the default call to action, uh, it, it tries to use the web address for the tour that you've built. Uh, but you can set this to anything you want. Uh, I'll set it to you know, google.com and click save. If I were to go to the tour, and click CTA, you can see it takes me to google.com. Now equally, uh, you know, Panoscan just calls this CTA, but you can actually uh, name this whatever you want within your theme editor. Uh, let's see, you want to call this sign up. And maybe you want to change the icon out as well. To a check mark, 
click update. If I were to go back to the tour, you'll see now it says sign up and there's a little check mark. And if I click on it, it takes me to google.com. Now another thing to note is that the call to action, not only is it showing in the menu, but it's also being tracked as a conversion. And what that means is that if someone clicks that menu item uh, within the analytics, we will consider that a conversion for the tour. Uh, now, if you don't want this being tracked as a conversion, you can just deselect that. Equally, if you don't want it showing in the menu, you can deselect that as well. In this instance, let's click Save. And as you can see here, it no longer shows in the menu. Now, next, uh, next item within the right-hand menu is the map. So if I click on this, uh, it basically gives me some settings for the map type and the map zoom. So currently, we support three types of map types, uh, a light theme, a dark theme, uh, and a streets theme, which is supposed to look more like Google Maps. And if I were to go into the tour itself and click on the map, you can see here it loads a map onto the screen uh, with the pin dropped on the location uh, of the, where the tour is located. Now, as with the other menu items, I can deselect whether I want to show that in the menu. In this particular instance, I'll shut it off. And if I go to the tour, you'll see that the map no longer shows. The last few items that you see here are the share tab, which is basically uh, a share button that gets that gets displayed within the tour. Uh, and you can kind of control how that looks as well. You can control the text that's displayed to the user. You can control whether you want to share the tour URL or if you want to share some custom URL instead. Uh, and if you want to share a custom URL, you can select that and then just enter the URL you want to share. And then whether you want that URL to be shareable on Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Let's say I just want uh, Google+, and Facebook. I could deselect those and then click Save. And if I were to go back to the tour and click on Share, you can see that it allows me to share the tour uh, to either Facebook or Google+, and the URL that I would be sharing is Google.com because that's what I set within the settings. Now the second to last menu item within the right hand menu is the contact button. So I were to click that, you can see I have some settings here. And this basically just allows me to, to control the contact information that shows up within the contact section of the tour. If I were to go back to the tour and click contact, as you can see, a little modal loads with some of the contact information. Now the last standard menu item within the right hand menu is the full screen button. And as you could tell, the only options that I really have are whether I want to show the full screen menu button or whether I'd like to track it as a conversion. So what if I'd like to add my own type of button to the right-hand menu? Well, I can easily do that by just clicking Add Menu Item. And what that does is it drops down a custom uh, button. And if I were to click on that, it'll give me some settings. So I can actually change out the button action, what I wanted to do, whether I wanted to open up a blank URL or whether I wanted to iframe in to the tour. I can, and I can drop in the URL of where I want the button going to. Uh, I can also change out the, the text for the button and the icon as well. So let's say I wanted to create a button called RFP. And I wanted to, it to open as an iframe. I paste in the iframe URL and then I just click Save. 
And if I were to go to the tour, you can see I have an RFP button now. And if I click on it, it actually opens up that URL as an iframe within the tour. So this is useful if you'd like to collect some information from the user uh, or have some type of web form that your client would like to use or sign up form they would like to include directly within the tour. Now, if you recall within the settings, I said that I wanted this button to open as an iframe. Uh, I can also have it open as a blank page. So if I were to click Save here, go back to the tour. In, th in this particular instance, if I click on RFP, you can see that rather than opening the link uh, as a iframe within the tour, uh, it opens it up separately within the new tab. And as discussed before, uh, I can name this button whatever I want, and I can also select any type of any type of icon that I want as well. So the next thing I'd like to discuss is the carousel settings. As you can see, there's a carousel settings button at the bottom. If I were to hover over it, uh, I have a few options. Uh, I can control whether I want the carousel starting on the on the 360 tours tab on a videos tab or on the images tab. I can also hide the carousel if I don't want to show it at all. So if I click save here, go back to the tour, you can see I now have a 360 tour with no carousel at the bottom and just the right hand menu. Now, I'm going to leave this selected as tours because I don't have any images or videos yet. But we'll be adding some now. So if I want to add a gallery of images to my tour, I'll just click on the Images tab. And within this area, I can now start uploading some images. So to upload some photos, I'll just click Add Image. And then select the image that I want to upload. Uh, and then using the cropping tool, I can crop the portion of the image that I want and click Add. And I'll quickly do that a few more times to add a few more images. Cool. Now once the images are done uploading, I can actually label my images as well. So I'll call this the bedroom, the fitness area, entrance, lobby, restaurant, bar, and pool area. And when I'm done, just click Save. And if I were to go to my tour now, you can see that I have both a tour tab and an image gallery tab. And if I were to click on the image gallery, you can see that I now have a gallery of images that I just uploaded. And if I open up this menu here, you can see we also have some thumbnails that are labeled, and I can click on those too. So what if I want to add some videos? Well, just go to the Video tab and click Add Video. And then I can just paste in a YouTube URL, and PanelScan will generate a preview for me. And if I'm happy with that video, I just click Add Video. And as you can tell, panels can automatically create a thumbnail for me here at the bottom. And I can also rename it to something different. And add more videos by clicking Add Video. So I'll just drop another YouTube URL in here. And then click Add. And if I were to click Save, and go back to my tour now, you can see I also have a Videos tab. And if I click on the Videos tab, to autoplay the first video for me. 
And I can also open up the carousel back and select different videos to preview and watch as well. So now I'm just going to go back to the Edit tab. And the last thing I'd like to show you is that you can actually reorganize uh, the order of a lot of these thumbnails and menu items as well. So here at the bottom, let's see I wanted the Normandy Lounge to be the first thumbnail. I could just drag that over to the, to the beginning. Uh, and maybe I want the McCormick board, Boardroom to be the second thumbnail. I could just drag that over there as well uh, and click Save. Equally, I can drag around and reorder the menu items. Let's say I want the RFP to actually be all the way at the top. I could drag that over there and click Save. And if I were to go to the tour now, you can see that the RFP menu button is at the top and the, the uh, thumbnails at the bottom and the carousel will reorder as well. So the last thing I'd like to show you is how you can actually control uh, what thumbnails show up in the carousel for the tour section uh, and how you can remove them and add new ones. Uh, it's pretty easy uh, to remove a thumbnail. You just click on the X and that removes that from the carousel. Uh, to add new thumbnails, you basically just navigate to the scene that you want to add uh, and click Add Scene. And Panels can automatically create the thumbnail for you, uh, but you do have to, but you do have to uh, title it yourself. And I'll just click Save. And if I were to go back to the tour, you can see I now have an 8th Street entrance thumbnail and the McCormick boardroom has been removed. So that about does it for the edit section of the custom tour builder. The next thing I'd like to show you is the share tab. Click on the share tab. I have a few ways I can share my tour. Uh, I can either use a direct tour URL or I can embed the tour on any website. All you have to do is follow these two steps and copy the code into your website or into the code section of your WordPress editor. The last tab I'd like to show you is the Meeting tab. The Meeting tab is a proprietary tool that our team has built that allows you to create a meeting from the virtual tour and share the walkthrough with anyone in the world. To get started, you just click Start Meeting. And as you can tell, the Meeting tool loaded in the virtual tour that I've built. Now if I want to share this experience with someone, I'll just click this little plus icon here and drop in their email address. So in this instance, I'm just going to type in panels can test. And click plus. Uh, you can also include other email addresses and click plus. Uh, and when you're ready to mail out the invitations, you just click mail invitations. Then you can see that I just got an invitation from Panelskin to connect and to join the meeting. So what I'll do is I'll grab this URL and try to open up an incognito window parallel to the presenter window to show you what the experience would look like for someone that's trying to, to, to join your meeting. And what I'll do is just enter my first name and email address and click join meeting. And as you can tell inside the presenter mode I could see that Tom just joined the meeting. And for the person that joined it says waiting on organizer. But the minute I start moving my tour it actually starts moving the tour on the person's screen as well. And I can actually click through into other areas of the tour and walk them through the space. Now this is great for, for leasing centers or for any, any, any businesses that have venues that they'd like to showcase. We find that actually a lot of clients actually love using this tool and use it on almost a daily basis. Now it's worth noting that this tool is completely web-based. So the user that you send this meeting to, they don't have to install any special software to get this to work. 
you can actually email this to someone and they could open it up on their web on their cell phone and you could take them through the space. Now to end the meeting, I'll just click the little X icon here and click yes to end the meeting. And as you can tell, it ended the meeting for both the organizer and the person that joined the meeting earlier. So the next thing I'd like to show you is the analytics tab. And as you can tell, we currently don't have any analytics for this tour. That's because no one's viewed it yet. So let's open up the tour and see what happens once we start interacting with it. So I'm just going to go to the Share tab, copy the tour URL, and open it up. Click Start 360 Tour, and I'll just start navigating through some of the scenes. And clicking on some of the menu items, such as the RFP, the share section, the contact button, maybe visit the Paul Pullman boardroom, and back to the third floor. And now if I actually go back to panel skin and click on the analytics section, you can see that the analytics just started firing. Now these are real-time analytics, and as you could tell, we had one visit with six scene views uh, and three menu clicks. And we also give you a breakdown of what scenes were being viewed within the tour itself. And as you could, su as you could see, I had one view for the third floor uh, and one view for the entrance, and I can even click on those scene names, and panels can load the actual 360 scene that was being viewed. We also have a reporting tool. After a few days of being active on someone's site, you'll see a whole history of menu clicks, scene views that you can report on and even export into either an image or CSV or Excel format. Now here's an example of a tour that's been up for quite some time. As you can tell, Panoskin's telling me that it's had an average of six visits per day. And over this 30 day period, it's had about 33 visits. Now I can actually uh, move this around here and take a look at longer date ranges. Uh, also, I can actually put in specific date ranges from the in the from and to fields. I can also take a look at three month projection, a three month uh, mark, the six month mark, and year to date. In addition, I could take a look at scene views, menu clicks, and conversions. So the last thing I'd like to talk about is billing. If you haven't paid for the tour, or haven't gotten your client to pay for the tour, then you'll probably get a message that says enable billing when trying to view the virtual tour outside of the Panoscom platform. To enable the tour, you'll have to enable billing. And you can do that within the billing section. When you first enter the billing section, you'll see that you have a short intro video that explains the different options you have when paying for your tour. I recommend watching the video, but for this screencast, I'm just going to click close and watch video later. You basically have two options. You can either pay for the tour yourself, or you pay for all the hosting on your own, or you can accept payments through Stripe, where you connect Panelskin to your Stripe account. When accepting payments through Stripe, you don't pay anything in hosting. You also don't have to provide a Google API key. So you won't incur any API costs through Google. Accepting payments through Stripe is the recommended route. By doing this, you build tours for free and only earn residual income. So in my situation, I'm going to want to accept payments through Stripe. I'll click that button here. And what that does is it takes me to a page where it asks me to select my country to connect the Stripe account with. Now, Stripe Connect allows you to accept payments in over 136 countries. But if you want to connect an account, a bank account, to be able to accept payments from your clients, it has to be, the bank account has to be from one of the 26 countries below. If your country isn't listed, you basically have three options. You can either create a bank account in one of the supported countries, you can use Atlas to create a bank account, or you can use the pay yourself option. 
until Stripe Connect becomes available in your country. In my instance, you know, Stripe Connect is available within the US, so I just click Connect with Stripe. And that takes me to Stripe. And if I already have a Stripe account, I can just sign in, or I can fill out all this information here and click Authorize. So as you can tell, a Stripe account was created for me, and that account was linked to my Panoskin account. So I now have uh, the option of either creating invoices for client paid plans or uh, paying yourself. Uh, now again, uh, the pay, pay yourself plans uh, is where you pay for the hosting of the tour yourself, uh, and then you go and charge your client on your own. Whereas the client paid plans uh, is, is where Panoskin allows you to create an invoice uh, and a branded invoice that you send out to your client uh, and once they pay Stripe will handle the payment uh, and disperse a platform fee to Panoskin and then the rest of the hosting to you on an annual basis. So as you can see here there are three options. There's the basic plan, the standard plan, the premier plan. Now what's included in these plans is pretty self-explanatory within the guide but the one thing I'd like to touch on is loads. So loads are every time the tour is loaded. Now, the numbers 2,000, 4,000, 10,000 respectively, uh, they're not just random numbers that we came up with. Uh, we have actually have tours that have been, that have been live for over a year now, uh, and just looking at their usage and how many visits they get, uh, this is where we came up with these packages. Uh, so the 2,000 loads package really makes sense for small business uh, and for more of an enterprise business, uh, such as a hotel, hospitals, or busy venues like convention centers. So if I were to scroll down, uh, you can see that we've got the breakdown for the pricing for each of the packages. Uh, and we actually show you uh, what the client would pay and what you would earn for each of the packages. Uh, and directly below that is a link that says how this is calculated. Uh, and if you hover over it, uh, it'll actually show you the breakdown for each of the packages. Uh, so in this particular, particular case, we're looking at the, uh, the basic package. Uh, and as you can tell, the client will pay $200 per year for the tour. Uh, $610 would go to Stripe. $2240 will go to Google API costs. Uh, and $50 will go to Panoskin as a platform fee. Uh, and the remaining amount, the $121.50, will get deposited into your bank account every year. So, you know, again, uh, you wouldn't have to pay anything out of pocket yourself. Uh, you don't have to pay any Panoskin fees. You don't have to pay any Google API costs. Uh, you only earn money with, with this model. Uh, and in addition to that, once you send the client the invoice uh, and they pay the invoice uh, on the client's credit card statement, uh, it won't say panel skin, it won't say stripe, uh, it'll, it'll actually say your company name because the, because the charge is originating from you. Uh, all we're doing is, 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 is helping out uh, and basically helping process the charge for you every year. Uh, but the charge is still coming from you uh, and the money is getting deposited into your bank account. So let's dive in and create an invoice. And as you can see, clicking the Create Invoice button took me to a screen that lets me preview the invoice before sending it to my client. This invoice is completely customizable. I can select the type of currency I want to bill my client in. So for example, let's say I'd like to use Euro instead of USD. Could do that. Uh, and then directly below that, you'll see the actual client name got pulled into the invoice. I can change that out to something different if I'd like to. And as I'm typing that, you may notice it's actually updating their invoice in real time. In addition to that, uh, I can select the person that I want to invoice if, if I've already created a user for them, or I can create a person to invoice. I can also customize the look and feel of the invoice itself. So let's say I'd like to actually add my, my own logo uh, and my own color scheme to the invoice. Uh, I can click Edit here. And this takes me to the branding section within Panelskin. So as you can see here, I can update the header background. I can also update the footer background. Uh, and let's say I don't want to show any logo at all. I can select None. And if I click Save, and then go back to my invoice, you can see that the logo was removed uh, and my green color scheme was used instead. Uh, but let's say I want to actually add my own logo to the top. Well, if I go back to the branding section panel skin and click on logos, 
uh, you can see I can upload a main logo and an inverted logo. Uh, since I have a darker background, I'll upload an inverted logo. Uh, and just for good measure, I'll upload my main logo as well. And as you can see, I've got both a main logo and an inverted logo that I could use uh, depending on the color scheme. Uh, so now let's go back to standalone pages. And I'll say and I'll tell Panelskin that I'd like to use my inverted logo. And I'll click save. And if I go back to the invoice, you can now see that my logo was added to the top here. And then just moving along, uh, I can verify some of the details for the invoice, uh, such as the plan details. Uh, in this instance, uh, you, the, hosting, the hosting plan is the basic plan, but I could always switch that out. If I want to do standard hosting or premier hosting, I switch that out here. Uh, I can also add a tax rate. Uh, so let's see, you want to add to, a, a VAT tax uh, to your recurring subscription costs. You could do that. Uh, so for example, you know, if I want to add 15%, uh, I, I could add that here. Uh, and then what Panelskin shows you is, is the actual breakdown. So it shows the client, for this instance, is going to pay $203 for hosting a year, uh, and that every year you're going to receive $133.46 uh, euro. And again, if you hover over how this is calculated, uh, we do show you the full breakdown, uh, where, where all the fees are going uh, and what you end up receiving every year. And, you, and if you look at the, 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 the preview for the invoice as well, uh, you can see that the tax rate has been applied, uh, you can also see that uh, uh, the, the, the total includes both the tax uh, and, and the hosting costs. Uh, but what if you want to add some, some line items to this? What if you want to actually charge for a, a one-time fee for tour development? Uh, or maybe you want to uh, charge for the photography you did all in one invoice. Uh, we let you do that too. Uh, so under add-on charges, uh, you can add different types of charges you like. Uh, so let's say for tour development right now, we've got this set to zero euro. Let's say we want to maybe set this to 100 euro. Uh, and maybe for your photography, you charge 300 euro. Uh, and then if you take a look at the invoice, you can see that, that was that was updated accordingly. Uh, you can see that for the tour development, we had the 100 euro and the photography 300 euro as well. Uh, and you can tack on other charges too. Maybe you did some drone work. Maybe you charge 300 euro for that. And then as you can see, the invoice gets updated automatically for you. Uh, we also show you the total of add-on charges uh, that, that the client would pay. Uh, and then we show you the, the, uh, the Stripe fee uh, associated with, with, uh, with processing, the, processing this within the invoice itself. Uh, and then you can actually take a look at the total earnings as well. Uh, you can see that the client would pay, in this particular case, would pay a thousand, thousand euro uh, for, for, this, uh, for this invoice. Uh, and eight ninety nine uh, would be would be the amount of money that uh, would be going to you. Now, before we click send invoice to email an invoice to our client, uh, I'd also like to mention that you can actually control the HTML email that gets sent out uh, to your client as well. So, in this particular instance, I'm going to click edit because I like to change the the background color uh, and the logo out for the email that gets sent out. So, I'm going to click edit here, uh, and that takes me to the HTML email section. Uh, within Panelskin uh, that allows me to change some of the stuff out. And I'll add the lime green color in. Uh, and for the logo, uh, I'm going, going to want to use the inverted logo that I uploaded. We also let you uh, change out the from name. So I'm going to change that out to Circle360. Uh, we also allow you to uh, set a reply to email. And for you to update your signature, you also have full control over the actual subject of the email, uh, the invoice button that's included in the invoice, uh, and the actual body uh, and text of the email as well. If you'd like to translate it into, this your, own into your own language, or if you'd maybe like to, to change some of the verbiage here, uh, we do give you full control of that. Uh, so I'll just click Save. And now if I go back to my invoice preview, uh, you can see that my email was, was updated as well. 
Uh, and then once I'm happy with, with both the email and the invoice, uh, what I do is I just click Send Invoice. You can tell the invoice was sent, and I have a status preview here of the invoice. Uh, you can see that it's pending. Uh, I can also preview what the actual invoice looks like that was sent out, uh, either on this page here or by clicking View Invoice. Uh, and that actually opens up the actual invoice that, that does get sent out to the client. Uh, and as you can see here, it's got my color scheme, it's got my logo here at the top, um, all the bill to information that I filled out, uh, and all the charges that I wanted to uh, uh, build a client at. Uh, so actually going back to the invoice preview, um, uh, you, can also, if you, you can also do a few other things on this screen. You can cancel an invoice itself, uh, or you can resend the email if you, if you like. Uh, so if you want to resend another invoice email, so let's say the client didn't get it, you could, you could do that here. So let's take a look at the email that the client actually got. And as you can tell, the email came through, uh, and it came through uh, with the from address of thir Circle 360 because that's what I set in the settings. Uh, and if I were to click on the email, uh, you'll see that we've got the, uh, the, the lime green header graphic that I set, and we've got my custom logo here saying three, Circle 360. Uh, and, and the body of the email, which, is, which you can also change out in the branding section as well. Uh, and if the client clicks Pay Invoice, uh, that basically takes them to the invoice, and they have the option of reviewing all the charges, and when they're ready, paying for the invoice. So I'm just going to do that real quick here. And I'm going to go ahead and click Make a Secure Payment. Cool. And as you can see, the payment was successful. And now if I were to go back to our panel skin tour uh, and actually refresh the screen here, you can see that this tour now is in an active subscription. And if I try to actually access the tour, And you can see here that I no longer get the enable billing uh, screen, and I can actually share this tour now with anyone outside of the Panoscan platform, uh, or embedded in my own website, or CMS like, like WordPress. And if I were to go to the credit card statement for the card that I just processed, uh, you can see that it says Circle 360 for the charge uh, of a thousand euro that was charged. Now, if I were to log into my Stripe account, you can see that the payment of a thousand euro just came through today as well. And if I go into the payment section, you can see that payment here as well. And if you were to click on it, you can get some more payment details, uh, such as the total fees charged and the payment method. Uh, you can also click on the billing tab and click on subscriptions, where it gives you all the subscriptions. And as you can see here, we got Jane Doe signed up for basic tour hosting. And if I were to click on her, I can see the, the actual details about the hosting plan, and I can see when the next invoice for the hosting is coming up next. And again, you don't have to worry about billing your client at the end of the year. Since you connected to Stripe, Panos can automatically bill your client at the end of the year for the hosting. And when your client is billed, your business name will still show up on the credit card statement, and the Panos can fee and Stripe fee will be deducted accordingly. And the remaining fee for the hosting will be deposited into your account just like with the initial payment that you just saw. In short, you'll be able to earn residual income on all your tours without having to pay any Google fees or Panelskin fees yourself, and all of it will be handled automatically for you by Stripe and Panelskin, leaving you more time to do what you love and building your business by earning compounding residual income. Now, the last thing I'd like to mention is that even though Stripe really simplifies your life, if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. You can always pay for the tour yourself. So if I were to go back to Panoskin, uh, as you can see here, we do have pay yourself plans. So if I select that and scroll down, uh, I can select from three different plans. We have a basic, a standard, and a premier package. Now, again, with these packages, if you decide to go this route, you do have to pay for the tour yourself uh, and then actually bill your client on your own. One nice part with our pay yourself package is that the Google API costs are actually included in the price as well. So you don't have to provide an API key. Now some of the other software providers out there allow you to provide your own API key. We are working on adding that option. However, you do have to remember that if you provide your Google API key, at some point you will have to start paying the API costs on your own as well.
Now the advantage of our pair yourself plans is that the Google API costs that we calculate into the price are based off the discounted rate of 1120 per thousand loads. And currently, if you take a look at Google's pricing, if you start having to pay for it, it's $14 per thousand loads. Now some of the other software companies recommend using multiple API keys. And although you can do this, if you create multiple keys within the one account, within one billing account, you'll still be liable for all those API charges. You would have to actually create separate API keys for separate billing accounts, which means you'd have to have separate credit cards on files. So in order to do something like that, you would actually have to create an API key for every single one of your clients, which can become a pretty cumbersome process. So all in all, although we do plan on supporting API keys, we still highly recommend opting for our Stripe option where you don't have to provide an API key or pay any of the costs yourself at all. To conclude, here's a handy chart that summarizes everything. As you can tell, the Panasonic Stripe Connect is the easiest and most scalable option. With Panasonic Stripe Connect, no Google API keys are required. The Google API fees are included in the price. You have automatic billing, branded billing invoicing, and you pay nothing out of pocket because the invoices are paid by your client. And you get to easily earn residual income and scale worry-free, not having to worry about hosting or Google API costs. And that concludes our introduction to the Panaskin Custom Builder. Stay tuned for more Panaskin updates.